and beer examples and uh, I'm gonna that's already nine o'clock I'm gonna post this as quickly as possible and work through the example as quickly as possible so that you have just uh, one more sample problem uh, pretty much like you're gonna have tomorrow uh, when your exam is okay this is June 3rd you're, this is for the macro class in the morning so you're tomorrow morning June 4th you'll take your exam all right, so uh, in the typical example, I've worked one out, and uh, I'll work from the example I've written up here. But the typical example has two years. It covers two years because you need two years to get a rate of growth or a rate of inflation. Right? We'll use 2010, 2011. We will make the first year the base year. No surprise there. That's exactly what we've been doing before. All right? We want two types of GDPs, a nominal and a real. We need both to calculate real growth. Well, to be precise, to calculate real growth, you need just the real. But to calculate inflation, you definitely need both nominal and real. And we need them for two years. Okay. Nominal GDPs use current prices. Real GDPs use base year prices. Our two products this time will use wine and cheese. Okay. So, one of the uh, things you learn about GDP, it's a large or granddaddy P times Q across many final goods. So you get a P times Q here, P times Q there for both wine and cheese respectively and you add them up and you get a larger total revenue figure. All right. So remember GDP is simultaneously a spending concept and a revenue concept but that's just another way of saying one person's cost is another, is another person's income. All right, so the uh, example I developed here, $15 for a bottle of wine times 1,000 bottles of wine produced in this first year. So that give us, gives us right off the bat $15,000 in revenue, price times quantity. Price times quantity, $15,000 in the revenue flow. Okay, for cheese, we have $4 as a price, 
we have 4,000 as a quantity, so that makes 16,000. Clearly, the nominal GDP first year, which happens to be the base year, for wine and cheese is 31,000. Real uses a base year price times a current quantity. Well, the base year is this same first year. So it has to be, once again, 15,000, 16,000, and 31,000, the two respective revenue flows added together. So that's easy, I think, I hope. All right, now let's see what we want to have happen. You should observe in the test tomorrow what is happening to P's and Q's so that you have a sense of whether we have an inflation case, deflation case, whether it's growth or whether it's recession. I've arranged it. $15.75 is the second year's price of wine. I've arranged it so that the quantity is 980. So we have the first sign of inflation, the first sign of a recession. If the pattern carries through, we'll be certain of what the math will turn out to be and what the graph will look like. Here we go on the wine, no, I'm sorry, the cheese part of the economy. $4.20 is the price. $4.20. Alright, so wine prices rose. Cheese prices rose. Oh, well that we're sure that we have an inflationary trend in this economy. We're sure we're going to get a positive inflationary trend. Alright, the quantity is 3920 so quantity fell with cheese and with wine. We have a recession. We're certain of that. And when we get a growth rate, we're certain we're going to get a negative number. You should know that before the math starts. That way you protect yourself from accidental errors. All right, so I've worked it out. I couldn't do this in my head, so I've worked it out. I have 15,435 for a nominal revenue flow for wine in the second year, 2011. I have 16,464 for the cheese nominal revenue flow in the second year. All right, all told, that's 31,899. So you could stop the video now and you know double check my work. Uh, I've double checked it, it should be right. All right, real. We want, again, a base year price times a current quantity. Which year was the base year? 2010. What was the base year price of wine? 15 bucks times current quantity of 980. Likewise, $4. Where's the $4 from? the base year's wine price of four. Four dollars times a current quantity of 3,920. So I work these out, I got 14,700. I got 15,680. So that all told, for the real GDP, in the second year, I have 30,380, which is down, obviously, from the 31,000. So the Q has fallen. We're sure we're going to get a negative growth rate. All right, I'll use a fresh page to start calculating the rates. All right, we want to calculate the rates. We want to draw the picture, all right? So, for the rate of real growth, the change in the quantity over the original quantity, new 
real GDP in the test tomorrow, it's a good idea to write out the formula. That way you protect yourself from small, little errors and my thinking that they're big errors. If you have the formula down there, I know you meant to do the problem the correct way. Old, real GDP. All right, get it straight. The new real is 30,380. So match it up properly. Minus 31,000. 31,000 was both nominal and real because it was the base year, but you need that 31,000 over the old 31,000. So I get a minus 620, the difference between these two numbers, it's a negative, over 31,000. When I put that in the calculator, I got negative 0 0.02, negative 2%. Got to be right. I double checked it. Should be right. Okay? So all rates of change, the difference over the original, new minus old over the original. We want real growth, we need real GDP, real GDP, real GDP. Okay, that's good. Let's tackle the inflation matter. Right. All right, remember inflation is two steps. Two steps. First, you have to find two GDP deflators. Two of them because you're going to eventually need a new deflator minus an old deflator over an old deflator. We have two years involved. The formula for the deflator is the nominal GDP over the real GDP times 100. Agree? So in the first year, 2010, for the wine and cheese economy, we have 31,000 over 31,000. I guess you almost don't have to do the math. Once you realize it's the base year, the base year deflator has to be 100. Now if I give you any type of pizza and beer problem, that is something to look for. That, that tells you, yeah, I'm on the right track here. I'm doing this right. If I give you just four numbers without the pizza and beer stuff in the background, and just uh, here's, you know, uh, like data from table 115 and table, and table 116, then you might not get that as a deflator. It all depends, right? So be alert. Remember, there were two types of questions in the mock test. That, like, I think it was number five and number seven, where you just had four numbers, and then there was like number nine. Uh, I think that was uh, coffee and cream, okay? So be prepared. But obviously with these, uh, these type of problems, you're going to get a base year deflator, always of 100. All right, second year, let's what, get those numbers again. 31899 over 30,380. Those are numbers we have before for the second year. Nominal over real times 100. I did that in the calculator and I got 105. You see, I purposely made nice numbers. I was thinking about a 5% inflation and I designed the numbers in my mind to get nice, easy results. 2%, negative for 2% growth. What are we going to get here for the rate of inflation? Should be pretty obvious, right? But what do you have to do? It's so imperative tomorrow in the test. Show all your work. Now you calculate the rate itself. Calculate the rate of change. The rate itself. By what method? New deflator minus old deflator over old deflator. You know what's coming down the pike. 105 minus 100 over 100. My lord, I couldn't have made it 
much easier. Right? Five one hundredths. Five percent. Point oh five. All right. So that confirms, yes, we knew the price level was going up. We knew we had what? Inflation. We were just working out the details, working out the math. And the growth rate from before, the quantity went down. So that's just, uh, that was the obvious recession. That we knew right as, once we took a good examination of the trend in the quantities for wine and cheese production right from the very beginning. Aha! Final step. Draw the graph. All right? So we have a wine and cheese economy, which is a metaphor for all goods and services. Right? There's no economy that literally has two goods, but, you know, we just made up this example. The output is measured. Quantity is measured in terms of real GDP. Real GDP. The price level is not a particular price, it's a general price. It's an average price level, which we measured by the GDP deflator. All right? That price index. We're thinking big. Aggregate demand and aggregate supply. We start out something. Remember the other day when we were working from the particular uh, years that you had calculated, that is growth rates and inflation rates for the particular year determined by your, your row in the, in the classroom. And uh, when I was checking your work, um, I was urging you, first set up a graph with supply and demand and start at an equilibrium point A. Because then you can go right away and put these numbers in. The first deflator was 100. The first real GDP was 31,000, right? And you know that there was a 5% inflation. Prices went up, but the quantities went down. Remember, there are four possibilities. This goes back to page 100, but now we're interpreting it for the large economy, for the general economy. There's only one way you can shift a curve to get that combination, and that has to be aggregate supply to the left, to the left. So there's a new equilibrium, right? This is a far more reliable way to figure out the points, the placement of the points, the, the, to identify the equilibriums. Remember, A is 2010. Right? And B is 2011. Right? To identify the points and to figure out which curve makes the most sense. Right? If you try to put the points somewhere just and then try to draw the, the supply and demand lines, that, that doesn't work. It almost always gets you messed up. All right, we need a number there, a number there, and uh, we're ready to close up the, the evening and I'll put this on the video if it's under 20 minutes. It lights up pretty fast. So this was 30380. 30380. The new real GDP for 2011. And it went up to 105. There's the 5% inflation. There's the negative 2%. Recession, or you know, decline in, in output, and uh, there you go. That is a full problem. Economics is easy, right? Spot, right? Spot. Did you get a spot in the? Did you? Why don't you make a little cameo appearance? Spot. Say hello. Say hello to the video and to the people. Say that song was for you, Spot. Right. Okay. Uh, I don't know whether you saw that. I don't know whether you've got this face in here. Step up. Put it away. All right. Well, I'm going to close up. All right. I'm going to upload this on YouTube right away and get it out right away. All right. Thank you. See you.